Hello, I'm Nigel Griffiths. We've finally got to part 10 of this HMC, Enhanced Graphical User Interface Live Demo. This is looking at the performance dashboard and a few finishing remarks. It has been around quite a while. This is just a little reminder that it is there and some of the features you've got. If you've switched on the data collection for your servers, then it can just sit there. You can look at this at any time. OK, so we're looking at our systems again, our servers. We can um, select one of these and go Actions, and here's View Performance Dashboard. That's one way of doing it. Um, or we can go in here, which we know this is these are the little graphs in here. This is the bigger set of graphs, and down below is the dashboard. So we can just click on here and bring in the dashboard. Okay, now let me drag that back in and uh, try and get you to see uh, most of it. It's a big window, bigger than my screen here um, at the moment. Okay, so here's the actual machine, Emerald, as you might expect. This data collection is on. You can select on the list of all servers, select them all, and switch all of them having the data collected so that it's ready on the HMC when you want to have a look. I think that's a pretty good smart move um, in the moment we got one minute updates uh, if I click here it can be like 5 10 15 that stops the screen changing as we're looking around things but uh, I prefer to have it uh, once a minute if we're looking at something there's a quick gray flash and, a, and it clears again that's it updating the screen if we look over in here for this particular machine then we can see we're using what is it there about 10 CPUs in here we, if we look on here the utilization number is is utilized is uh, there's a flash one uh, minute later um, 10.11 is the utilization and you can see the sort of peak usage just got up a tiny fraction over that minimum usage it went down to 10 so we get get some real numbers in here and we got uh, 16 installed and 16 active in case you've got uh, capacity upgrade on demand uh, so that's the CPU utilization if you look over here this is the uh, memory we can see that available capacity there is 102 gigabytes so we could do performance tuning by using some of the memory in the machine to avoid uh, disk io for example or let our programs grow to larger sizes good performance tuning uh, tool uh, in here we got network traffic great big numbers in here but i won't go through those it's got some peak numbers and uh, how many uh, different sorts of uh, uh, physical um, network cards you got with a sriov or a bridged network um, in here we have a similar sort of thing for the storage this is the storage that the vio server is providing uh, for me it's a shared storage pool but if they're using um sans and those sorts of things then that's been here as well down in here we actually have this is the server overview there's one line in here for each of our machines we can see the blue machine has been going up and down it's currently at this level um, the Emerald backup machine is running consistently at 7.9 something, I'm averaging 7.8, uh, so it's fluctuating quite a high number in here. Um, so these are like the bars, error bars, for, for my physics days, of it sliding between these two numbers. These are fairly consistently at a particular level. If we scroll down a bit in here, we can find out which of the busy LPARs. Um, the order is a little, little strange in here, I'm not quite sure I can justify it, but um, if we look at the utilization, we hit this twice, and then look at the top, then this is the Emerald Backup, taking 5.8 CPUs, um, Download is taking 1, Blue is taking uh, 1 and 3 quarters, um, whoa. VM179 is taking half a CPU, and then there's tiny little things down in here. Again, we can do the similar sorts of things for the who's, who's taking the most memory. If we click on that twice, then we can see. No, maybe didn't do it. First time. There we go. So the, the big ones taking 16 gigabytes are the, this bunch of logical partitions in here, and the rest are all smaller numbers once we get the order right. And we can do the same for who's taking the bulk of the network I.O., which is very little in my case, and very little storage. I'm spinning processes on to make the machines look busy, so I'm, I'm cheating really at the moment. Okay, so that is the server overview. You can quickly identify which of your LPARs are taking the most CPU. If you want to look at the machine as a whole, processor utilization trend. So we have a graph in here. 
and we can see that we've had a bump in here about four o'clock this afternoon and um, otherwise it's been fairly consistent the yellow dot is the minimum and the red dot is the maximum so we're actually currently at the maximum and um, in here we've got different numbers in here the blue line is the overall usage uh, the green one at the top is uh, here is allocated and this is the total 16 gigabytes uh, 16 CPUs in, in the actual machine um, again we can have a breakdown in here of the partitions who's doing what and what mode they're actually um, operating in uh, the various things in here we got a similar sort of thing for memory utilization this probably is just a straight line oh, there's a bit of a bump in here I started an application in the part of my demo one of my new LPARs uh, took a bit of memory on the, the network side probably consistent oh a bit of a blip there maybe it was when that uh, LPAR started up it did something on the network and storage I, I doubt there's much going on here this is uh, 1000 kilobytes this is a megabyte a second this is nothing at all really uh, we're not using SRIOV so I expect very little we can choose which which of them in here we can actually see some information about SRIOV so that's uh, the quick five minute summary um, but that's there for every machine you can quickly go and have a look in find which is the busy LPAR virtual machine uh, for CPU memory and uh, network and storage so that's a quick way to find out who's the guilty guy soaking up the power on my machine or perhaps which one I should move to a different machine if I've got spare resources somewhere else I hit the close button here to stop that and I think that's the end of my demo so um, thank you very much Ward, for watching I've got one slide to finish off as a quick reminder of what we've seen okay so that's the demo done let's just remind us of what we've been doing HMC we've been looking at the 780 version of the enhanced plus graphical user interface the enhanced plus I hope you've seen that it's fast and flexible and, and simple to operate the CLI the command line changes local and remote they haven't changed the rest APIs are exactly the same there may be a couple of extra options or flags on some commands but uh, anything that you currently have should run fine it's the results of a long five-year program both analyzing what we do how we could change things to improve them how to save you time how to automate things that you don't really want to do again and again and so we've got a better HMC I've been using the power 8 HMC which is a nice fast way of running it compared to the, uh, the Intel based machines the current uh, 860 software has the classic graphical user interface and this is ported until the end of 2018 time to uh, investigate it and time to move up to the enhanced plus when we have our power 9 base machines then there'll be a power 8 HMC 910 software that will be mandatory for power 9 and that won't have the classic GUI it'll be just enhanced plus like the 870 does now well thank you very much for taking interest in this series of videos I hope you watched uh, all of them or most of them don't forget to give us a thumbs up it helps others find our video series and you can consider yourself now an enhanced plus GUI guru just get yourself some practice and you'll be good to go